I'm really excited about today because today is the day that I'm installing our plants on this living wall. Now, this living wall, it took Cameron and I a couple of days to build, and it was actually a really easy project. Um, we did have some issues with the water pump, so there is an irrigation system built in this, and the water pump that we originally ordered, it just wasn't strong enough with the water pressure to push the water vertically up seven feet in order for the drip system to properly work. We had to order a new pump and we tested it. It works really well. Now is the fun part, which is going to be installing the plants. Now the purpose of this living wall, it was built in mind to one, be purely for indoors, and secondly, for it to be self-sustainable meaning that I will not have to water the plants on this wall. And that is really exciting to me because as a plant parent, the one thing that I wish I could change is reducing the, the maintenance time. And for those that have a lot of plants, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. It can take hours, it can take an entire day. So I've been thinking of different ways of how can I really minimize the time spent on the maintenance and increase my time spent on the caring, the pruning, the things that I enjoy doing that's therapeutic for me when I'm spending time with my plants. And I think this is going to be the solution. Once the, wall, uh, the plants are on the wall, then I'll be able to check over the next couple of weeks how the plants respond. And if they take off and are thriving, I'm probably going to be building more of these living walls throughout my house because that means I can add more plants to my collection. Don't tell Cameron. I'm going to go ahead and start installing the plants and yeah. I've prepared some plants for the bottom part of the living wall. What I did to prepare them was remove as much soil from the roots as possible. Then once I knocked off all the soil, I just gave them a really thorough washing with water. I want to keep it as clean as I can because I don't want any issues with pests in the future. The wall is covered in two layers of recyclable plastic felt. This material is normally used in the interiors of automobiles. I love this material because it's made out of post-consumer plastic and is 100% recyclable. We added two layers on our wall. One, it'll allow us to sandwich the plants between the layers for all the roots to get wet. And secondly, it'll provide the plants protection during the winter when it gets super cold in our home. If the roots are exposed to cold temperatures, the plant will get cold damage and could die. We plan to use a water warmer that's used for fish tanks to keep our plants warm in the winter. I'm starting with the larger size plants at the bottom. If I add them to the top of the wall, they could obstruct the view of light for the smaller plants. That's why I'm really focusing all the larger leaf plants at the bottom of the wall. I've chosen plants with different sizes, colors, and textures. The design is intentional because I don't want plants to blend together or one color to take over. For example, I'm trying to avoid clustering all of the green and white variegated plants and instead spread them around for balance. Some of the plants are a little top heavy I'm relying on Velcro to fasten the plants and provide support until the plant's roots become embedded in the felt and can support itself. We're really excited about this wall. From what I've seen, most indoor living walls that are built for homes are organized hanging planters, but they require the same amount of maintenance as other planters you just add a higher location and the need of a ladder. If I have to get a ladder to water my plants, that's just more work for me. And honestly, I'm lazy. <laughs> that's why a self-watering system was a requirement for our wall. Imagine not having to water your plants, but simply check on them for pests and pruning. That's the type of plant maintenance I love. It's therapy for me. 
no more back and forth with a water pitcher, no more checking on the soil to determine if it's watering time, no more pool parties in the bathroom because the plants have their own pool. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to see how this turns out. I also have a very optimistic theory that the living wall will help deter certain pests. Since there will be moving water and plenty of humidity, this alone should keep fungus gnats and spider mites away. I originally tried moving to Lekka for some of my plants because I wanted to deter fungus gnats. I have a current issue with them. And also Lekka has several benefits of low maintenance and less water. I live in California and we nearly have droughts every year. That's why I'm water conscious. But Lekka turned out to be more work due to the constant checking of the plants, having to revert back to the back to water to save any unhappy plants, checking if the pots had enough water, which sometimes I forgot, and checking the water pH of all the pots. It seemed the more plants I had, the more work that it took just to convert the plants and the upkeep. It just almost didn't seem worthwhile. Actually, it wasn't worthwhile for me. I think Lekka is a great solution for smaller plant populations, but if you have a lot of plants, then it's, it's just a lot of work. That's why I'm really excited about this living wall. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I have my fingers and my toes crossed, hoping that this will be successful. And I, you know, I'm going to be monitoring this wall religiously for the next four to six to eight weeks. I'm done with the plant installation and I'm pretty pleased with the results. There's a lot of texture, a lot of color, and a variety of plants. So I'm really excited to see how these plants cohesively grow on this living wall. My hope is over time as they mature and grow on the wall that eventually we won't see any of the plastic gray felt. It will be important that I keep an eye on the plants over the next week to two weeks because if there's any discoloring on the leaves, if I smell any like funky odor, then I know that the roots are rotting and I'll have to remove the plant from the wall. If you're really interested in watching to see how these plants take to the living wall and revolves over time, stay tuned because I'll be giving updates on this living wall. If you liked this video, please hit that like. There's also a notification bell so you can get updates on when I release or drop the next video. And if you haven't already, subscribe. I hope this was helpful for someone who's interested and intrigued by possibly creating your own indoor living wall. But we'll see how this does. Keep your fingers crossed. And as always, thanks for watching.